this is Resident Evil 2 on the N64. So the first thing I did was I loaded my game, because this is the cartridge I bought, and these are all the saves I got. So, we got a new game, normal and easier difficulties, Leon and Claire are on the cartridge, and we have a selection of violence and a selection of blood, blue, green, and red. So let's begin. Resident Evil. <laughs> A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation in the affair. The case was apparently closed, thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But the Umbrella Corporation's experiments were far from finished. What have we got here? Stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. gun inside. Better take it with you. I'll meet 
you there. Okay. So what I decided to do here is I'm going to try and play through without picking up anything up until the police station at least so we can discover Brad Vickers as a zombie because if you do that you can unlock a special outfit for Leon and Claire as well as a special outfit for uh well an extra outfit for Leon and an extra weapon for Claire so that's what I'm doing and that's my first attempt at Leon with the N64 controls. So let's listen to this guy with this little uh, cutscene here. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! <sighs> Sorry about that. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. Now, the first difficulty of really this kind of port is naturally the 64 control. Because, I mean, you're using a trident instead of a regular controller. Anyways, the tank controls are, well, they're tank controls. They can be challenging or they can be simple, depending on how well you are adept with them. Well, for me, uh, well, I can tell you that I'm not bad at them. But considering the age and date of this game, it's kind of hard to... uh. It's kind of hard to keep your skills in touch when you're playing modern games sometimes. On top of the sake of normally you're playing with a PlayStation controller than an N64 controller. While right now I'm actually playing with what is called the uh, Admiral Bull or the Admiral by Hyperkin. So I'm using a nice Bluetooth controller to play, but. It's still a challenge nonetheless. You can't use the joystick, you have to still use the D-pad. And really, I mean, some of the things I'm quite surprised about with this game is simply the sheer sake that this has both scenarios on one cartridge while this is actually a double disc for PlayStation. But what surprises me most about that is with the 64, a lot of times, actually with any game I've come across, there's not really much for voice acting or actual cutscenes. I mean, when it comes down to full motion video, like you saw with the intro, like it kept it all. And despite the fact that uh, PlayStation is usually much better when it comes to graphics and whatnot, the 64 actually keeps its own on this for once and let's see we're kind of damaged and I just kind of ran into the group and I try to run away so I mean that's one of the things I picked up on this game was that the graphics could be pretty good even for a 64 but one of the big things I discovered was that this port actually has surround sound as compared to the PlayStation port where it's just monotone. So I died here as Leon and I decided to try out with Claire next. So we're going to see that here shortly. A bizarre so I wanted to show you this because well it's Claire's opening see. and Slight differences, you could see their, it was you could see her side of the story, terrible disaster so, had been caused by the team well, virus. let's see how well I do, and here's our opening.
finally here. Okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? Stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. see her inside the bar the and you can see how Leon and Claire meet on both right? ends so far in this video yeah. First day on the so Great. one of the other things I like to point out is that behind the two of them is actually the same model for Leon but as a zombie so uh, let's see what else can I tell you so I initially played version level 2 on the PS1 but it was actually more so through the PS3 with their, uh, you know, emulator style of purchasing stuff where it was, you buy it and you can download it and play it on your console or transfer it to the PSP, which I eventually did. And, you know, it's been a very long time since I've actually played Resident Evil 2, at least in this form. So I figured I'd give it another shot and have at it. But I figured since I'm playing 64, I should, you know, really give it a good challenge. So I figured if I pick up, if I pick up nothing until I get to the police station, I can at least get that special outfit. And so you know, it's uh, a little more challenging. I mean, it took me about four hours to beat the game. So yeah, here we go. So my main goal is to just bob and weave through all these zombies taking my time and doing my best not to get hit by anything. As you can see I am uh, what is called trailing the zombies, making them come in a certain pattern so I can avoid them and outrun them in certain situations like with this one I'm going to the side and that one I'm pulling away from the door that I need to get to. And here we'll see the modified version for Claire of this cutscene. You'll see that the guy acts much nicer to her. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Don't shoot! I'm a human! Ooh. Sorry about that, babe. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. Look at him calling her babe and darling. We all know that he's about to get killed by zombies here shortly. But what we don't know is that he actually is the person that sent the facts to the police department later on in the game 
We'll see that later on in the video towards the end here. Let's see, trying to go down, trying to go down. Trying to get them zombies to open the door. Since it's so tight, we gotta shoot them a couple times. Run, run, run faster. Get away from him. Get out of there. No, get off me, get off me. So, we, uh, we're running through, going upstairs, you know, normal Resident Evil stuff, looking through the dark gloominess. I honestly think that this version might be a little darker than the PlayStation version. I just kind of noticed that myself. Come on, lady, get off me. And, well, we're almost there. I think we got a couple more sections left, like... Yeah, this is where I ran in through the spot with Leon, and I got to the subway car and got through. I think this is about where I died with Leon. So, we gotta get on a little farther. But I think we are almost at the police station. I think we got, what, two more spots left? Yeah, I think it's, what, two more. See, getting around. Oh, get off me, creeper. Okay, so we're a little bit hurt. Open up the gate. Good, they're stuck there. And okay, so this is the platform that we take. And there's Brad, zombified Brad. After he was already killed by Nemesis. It's kind of funny that both games take place within the same time span. But you never run across Jill. And Jill never comes across these two. Or Sherry for that matter, if I'm not mistaken. Neither. None of the characters actually go around each other. Hmm. Brad is the only defining thing. Like, you don't even see... Mr. X in 3. You don't see Nemesis in here. It's nothing. It's just hilarious to think about. But since I spawned Brad, now I can pick up some stuff like the handgun bullets. I can at least get that save ribbon and save my game. This is actually the first time I actually made it to the saves file. So... What you're seeing is legitimately making it there. All those save files are from past people that owned my cartridge. And I've tried loading them up and tried playing them, but because of my lack of knowledge of the game and how familiar I am with it, it makes me a little uh, hesitant to actually continue with them because I have really no idea what they did or where they're at. So let's see, we gotta reload our gun. Gun's ready. That little platform goes underneath and... Alrighty. Come on, Brad. Show up. Show up so I can shoot you. Classic video game logic. You can't kill anything until it shows up on screen. Man. We're taking a lot of bullets. Come on. Get. Stay. No. Double tap. Dead. Pool of blood. Pool of blood means good. Special key. Now we can get the outfit. And the weapon. I unfortunately will tell you that I did not get to... Well, I mean, I did get to the outfit, eventually. 
but I unfortunately did not record myself getting there. So what you're going to see is my first attempt to get to that outfit and then, well, I didn't get my second attempt on camera until uh, pretty much after the fact of me obtaining the outfit. Right there's the unicorn medal. That's where we're going to be ending the video is me placing it in there and getting the spade key. Looking around, checking doors, checking computer. Don't know why I even bother. I know that I, I can't open the doors anyways. That much I do remember. But uh, we'll go to that one door that we can open and get the card key so we can explore the rest of the police station. So see you then. <laughs> Hang in there. Are you the only officer left in the building? Uh, who are you? Claire. Claire Redfield. I'm looking for my brother Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris. Jill Barry. Every Last Stars team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other Stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything, at the risk of their own lives, but no one believed them. <sighs> Are you okay? Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But... Just go! Okay. Just hang in there. I'll be back soon. wonder why he locked us in. I mean... Well, he's probably gonna die. We know he's gonna die. He's gonna transform into a zombie later. We all know how this is going to go. I mean, there's only, what, <clears throat> four, five survivors? I mean, you got Leon, Claire, Sherry, Ada. That's four. We got, what, Hunk, five? And just for sheer jokes and giggles, I'll say Tofu for six. Because why not Tofu? So let's see, I'm still hurt. I used the key card, we opened the doors. I'm gonna go through this door because it is the door to the dark room which has the uh, closet with the outfit. So I'm gonna put the key in that box here soon. After I read this, I believe. It has the password to the safe. There we go. Keys right there. I mean, we at least saved. So Brad is gone. Or Brad is at least there. There or not there. Either way, I know that we can get the key if I die. And that's what's important. Because I do die. But I die at the worst possible spot. Because, if I'm not mistaken, it's in the hallway with the dark room, just before the dark room, actually. So, let's see. Right now... Oh, wait, I remember this. This hallway. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna change the audio here, just to, uh... 
because we got a cutscene right here. That's what I was saying about the graphic capabilities of the N64 with those cartridges. It made that cutscene look really good, despite it not being, you know, on a CD. So, I don't know. That liquor hit us pretty hard. Not just as a character, but as a whole fan base. I mean, it hit us good as a gaming fan base as a whole. And, you know, we're, uh,. If I'm not mistaken, one hallway away from the dark room. So I'm gonna try and make my way there. Let's see, get around this corner. See, this is what I was telling you about the tank controls. You gotta be a little used to it. You gotta be, well, capable. Okay, this is where the dark room is. I just gotta get around these zombies. And, man, I'm just getting. Man, lady, get off me. So, I'm probably like, what, one hit left? I'm gonna try and trail these zombies. And... Crap. Crap, I got stuck with the controller there. So, I'm gonna try and turn around and. Oh, nope, I died. So, I died there and reloaded my save, and I forgot to get the actual outfit in the locker but we get to see it in action i mean we got my pistol here firing as fast as i can and as you can tell it's really not that fast it's not very rapid fire -ness. so luckily when you get this outfit you get that colt saa and if this guy would freaking get off of me which he needs to you get some rapid fire -ness like that and from there we're gonna Get the heck out of here. Let's go up them stairs. So, I will say that in between me uh, dying and loading, I decided to take a quick look at what was different about the different ports between this PlayStation and the Dreamcast. And I'd have to say the biggest thing about the 64 port, besides, you know, the graphics being, you know, what they are and everything but this has that surround sound audio unlike the PlayStation it has a separate set of files that are only for this and I think they're meant to more hint towards Resident Evil 3 than anything because they're Jill files but I'd say you can consider this more of a small little walkthrough to get that little outfit and gun as well as up to the spade key. As far as what I did for here, the one of the things I discovered was they had cheat codes built in. So to help me get to the outfit, that's exactly what I used. And after that, I just simply played the game and had fun with it. I mean, not that I took the challenge away, it was the sake of now it became a mental challenge. Not so much of you know, to survive, but to see if I could actually last long enough through this game without breaking a controller through sheer arrogance of, man, like, that thing took forever to move. Like, you saw me, like, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to move. This is the frustration of the game. Like, I, exactly, like, it took forever to move until just then. So... That was my biggest difficulty with this game. Like, if I was more familiar with it, just as a whole, as well as better with the controls, I wouldn't have really needed the cheats. But, I still used them anyways, because why the heck not? I mean, that's what fun is. That's what part of having fun games is, is trying to find where things break. Like, you see, I was trying to just simply face that stone and pick it up, and it wouldn't let me until I changed perspectives. 
blood red jewel about the size of a fist? Oh, it's a virgin heart. Well, let's throw it into a volcano and appease the gods. So from here on out, enjoy the rest of the video.